1 Samuel chapter number 7 and verse number 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen, called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Samuel, the prophet, priest, the leader at this time of Israel has routed. I mean, they had to run the Philistine army down to kill them. He's routed them. He's ran after them. They have defeated the army in such a way that Samuel never has to deal with them again. The Philistines, a barbaric people, an idol worshiping people, a people who were set on destroying everybody else especially the people of God. We are surrounded in our day with people who not only want to destroy everyone around them but they have a goal and a heart to make sure to destroy the people of God. You are under attack and what he does here after this great victory is he takes a big stone and he sets it up in between men and Shein. He sets it up there to mark the place of their victory. This is nothing new in the Bible. When they crossed Jordan and came into Canaan, Joshua told them pick out twelve men. Pick up a stone out of the Jordan bed uh, and when we get on the other side we'll stack them here together for in time to come uh, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Uh, you can tell them how God uh, hath brought us into the land of Canaan. They were marking that victory. They were marking that place. It's not only put there as a mark, but it's put there as a memorial to remind them every time they look at it what God has done for them. That word Ebenezer in itself basically means help stone. Uh, he set up a help stone. Now at our house we live, uh, uh, thank God God has blessed me. I am an upper class redneck now. I live in a double wide. <laughs> and we, I lived in plenty of single wides and I'm not putting down on anybody who lives in single wide. I spent most of my life in one but God just felt that I needed more room I guess and give me a double wide. And we're on a well. So when we bought a well cover we bought one of those looks like a big old hewed out stone and put it over our well. We use our back door so every time we come out the back door to get in the car, every time we walk out on our little back porch, every time we go to move, we can't help but see that stone. We've called that our Ebenezer stone. Every time we mark that land right there because God gave it to us. We mark how far God had brought us every time we want. look at that stone uh, and look at that double wide God give us it reminds us of how good God's been to us and I say tonight that you ought to set the stone like Samuel did you ought to put up a help stone if nothing else you ought to write it down on a piece of paper and put, pin it to your refrigerator put it in the front of your Bible so every time you look at it you are reminded of what Samuel said, hitherto hath the Lord helped us and tonight this is your time and this is your place to set the stone and for just a few minutes tonight I'm going to preach on that thought, set the stone. See, if you'll set the stone tonight, it will produce stability in your life right now. But it will produce security in your life in the days to come. Because you'll say, every time you look at that stone, God brought me to this moment, and if he brought me through all of that, he won't have no problem taking me the rest of the way. We need tonight to set the stone. First of all, when I look at that stone, we ought to set that stone because when I look at it, I see the hitherto. Samuel said, hitherto 
hath the Lord helped us. Now that's a big Bible word hitherto and I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed or brightest bulb on the porch but what I see when I see that hitherto he means from way back yonder all the way to this moment right here where we're setting that stone. I'm here to tell you every time I see that stone I see the hitherto and it reminds me of where God brought me from. See you don't know who I was. You don't know where I grew up. You don't know how they said he'll never amount to nothing. How he said his family is no good. My wife sitting here I can tell this. My first puppy love girlfriend was in my home church and when her mama found out that she was talking to me her mama set her down and said don't talk to that boy. Don't have nothing to do with that boy. That boy is no good. His family is no good. His daddy is no good. He'll never amount to anything. And let me just stop right here and say I may not be much hallelujah but I'm a whole lot more than they ever thought I'd mount to be I know where God found me let me go ahead and make somebody mad here's a little prick in the message tonight I'm sick and tired and fed up above my eyebrows of people standing up in the pew and preachers standing up behind the pulpit bragging on how great a sinner they were like they miss it and wish they could go back to it Fooey on that baloney and hogwash now you ought now to forget where God found you but I don't want to go back there I'm telling you he stepped over on the poor white trash side of town he came over there where nobody else had come and found me and got me and he's brought me all the way from there all the way to this moment I may not be much but that woman never thought good godly woman still godly today she never thought I'd be in Florence Kentucky preaching the word of God I never thought I would be either but every time I look at that stone hallelujah I remember where he found me and what he brought me to (laughs) set the stone and it'll remind you where God brought you from that hitherto not only reminds me of where God brought us it reminds me of where or how God battled for us See, if you'll read the few verses before this, the Philistines was a large army with large weapons and chariots, and they had them outmanned and outgunned. The people of God were scared. And they went to Samuel and said, Would you ask the Lord to help us? And Samuel took a suckling lamb. And the Bible, your Bible says that he offered it whole. He didn't cut it into pieces best way I understand ho he didn't skin it he didn't gut it he didn't field dress it he just took a suckling lamb and said uh, we're just going to give it all to God uh, and offered him as a burnt offering and I'm going to go ahead and run a later part of the message but you know what God done uh, God didn't step down there and come in a mighty rushing wind uh, God didn't send a, uh, uh, an army of angels with fiery swords uh, God just thundered out of heaven I like to say it like this. God looked down and saw the people of God go all in, get a little revival living going, uh, and he cleared his throat. Uh, and it discomfited the armies of the Philistines, and they turned on each other and ran for the hills. I'm telling you, some of you could stand up tonight and say, I should have died in that house fire. I should have died in that car wreck. I should have died when this happened. I should have died of that cancer. I should have died of that disease but God cleared his throat uh, and removed your enemy and fought your battle and stood between you and hell and stood between you and death hitherto set the stone most of you know that my dad was not a spiritual man I'm no prophet nor prophet son my dad was an old time head busting backside kicking hard nosed mean as a rattlesnake hated everybody equal old time policeman and when I was young they didn't have all them insurance rules I used to ride with them on second third shift in the car had a little jacket had police on it 10 12 years old I've been I've been in places that a 12 year old kid shouldn't have been in heard things they shouldn't have heard seen things that 12 year olds shouldn't see well riding with my dad I was riding with him one night now I know up here in the big city Y'all got nightclubs, sports bars. Down there where I'm from, we ain't got nothing but beer joints. 
and they was having a free for all battle royal brawl in the parking lot at one of those beer joints and they came on call for every available unit my daddy took off and looked over there we had that 2 by 60 air conditioning back then he had two windows rolled down run 60 mile an hour to cool off he looked over at me and he said roll that window up now some of you young folk have to google this but there's a time when you roll a window up with a handle and I rolled that window up and he said lock that door and I locked that door he started rolling his window up and he told them on the radio he said there's only one entrance into that beer joint and one out what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the driver's side door up I'm going to block that exit nobody can get in nobody can get out he said son when I slide up there I'm going to step out of this car and when I do I'm going to shut the door when I shut it you lock that door you stay in this car I said man what if one of them big drunk brawlers we had some bar room brawlers in our town I said what if they get uh, get to me daddy and get a hold of him I was scared I, what are we going to do my daddy said they'll have to come through me he pulled up there and slid that car up there and he jumped he stepped out and slammed that door I reached over and locked that door and he reached and pulled that we call it a head patch where I'm from it's a blackjack it's a steel ball on a spring wrapped in leather he reached and pulled that out of his back pocket he went to knocking heads he went to kicking folk down he went to punching and slinging I mean folk I'm telling you he's doing such a good job I I leaned over and cracked that window about that far. I said, get them, Daddy. You're doing a good job. Stay on them. Take care of it. And I come by to tell somebody tonight, if you'd set that stone and get reminded of how God has stood between you and your enemies, you might jump up tonight and crack your window and say, God, you've been doing a good job of fighting my battles and taking care of my enemies. You've been protecting in me. I say hallelujah. Set the stone. It'll show you the hitherto. When I look at that stone, I not only see the hitherto, but I see him. Samuel set that stone down and said hitherto from way back yonder when we was in bondage in Egypt. When I was in bondage and sin and nobody cared. All the way to this moment of victory. He said it's been the Lord. That word Lord tells me of his authority. See Jesus is Lord. He's Lord whether you like it and he's Lord when you don't. He's Lord when you're up and he's Lord when you're down. He's Lord when you're blessed and he's Lord when you're broken. He's Lord when you think he's Lord and he's Lord when you think he's not. When it looked like the devil's winning, he's Lord. And when God's a-moving, he's Lord. He's Lord. He's always been Lord. He is Lord sitting in Mary's lap. He is Lord hanging on a cross. He is Lord buried three days and three nights in a tomb. He is Lord on resurrection morning. He's Lord seated at the right hand of the Father. When I was pastoring, I had a young family, husband, wife, four children. Now, when you pass the small country churches, you don't want to leave the husband, wife, four children. But he had come down ever so often. Now, listen, I'm not making fun of him. He was serious. He'd be broken. He'd come down. He'd call me down. Now, if you pastor where I did, you don't like to get down and turn your back on the congregation. I just told you we didn't have clubs. We had beer joint and bar room brawlers. They came to church back in them days. And he'd say, preacher, preacher, pray with him. He wouldn't let a deacon pray with him or Sundays. He wanted the pastor, pastor, pray with him. I got down one Sunday. I said, what are we going to pray about? He said, pray I make Jesus Lord. And I got down there and prayed with him. I went home. My wife set a feast on the table for Sunday dinner. The Holy Ghost convicted me. I had to get my suit back on, go back to the church, spent the afternoon fasting and praying. And I said, all right, Lord, next time he does it, I'll take care of it. I'll run them off. It'll run them off, Lord, but I'll do it. But we broke uh, weeks. Sometime later, I looked. Tears running down his face. Here he come. He got down there. He knelt down. He said, Pastor, I tried to ignore him. 
I said, anybody over here want to do business with God? Anybody God dealing with? He said, Pastor, Pastor. Finally, I couldn't ignore him anymore. I said, yes, sir, son. Uh, what can I help you with? He said, I want you to pray with me. I said, what are we going to pray about? He said, I want you to pray that I'll make Jesus Lord. I said, get up off your knees, son. Go back there and sit with your good family. You came way too late. You can't make Jesus Lord. Uh, God already highly exalted him. Give him a name above every name. Jesus. You say, well, he's not Lord of my life. He may not be, but it won't change the fact he's Lord. Hallelujah. He's Lord. Lord. He's got all authority in heaven and in earth. He's who he wants to be. He can do what he wants to do. He doesn't have to explain it to you or me. He doesn't have to make us understand it. Let me go ahead and make you mad again. We sing a song said Father alone. I know all about it. I don't know if you will or not. God doesn't know you or me an explanation. He may tell us and he may, you may not never know why you had to go through that but I'm going to tell you I believe I that just one glimpse of him in glory will all the toils of life repay. It won't matter what we went through. I don't know if that's a helping you tonight, but it's a helping me to know that he's Lord. He has all authority. But look at the spelling of that word Lord. It's in all capital letters. That's not a misprint in the King James Bible. It's an English transliteration of the word Yahovah or Jehovah. It means the self-sufficient God. God all by himself. Hold on, this might not help you, but God doesn't need you to be God. He is God for you got here. He'll be God when you go. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. He's God all by himself. Hey, didn't nobody vote him in. Can't nobody impeach him. He don't have to have a committee meeting. He don't have to answer to one house or another. He don't have to get your opinion or mine. He don't have to run approval by anybody. He don't have to make it understandable. He's God. He's always been God. And he always will be God. And being Lord with all capital letters tells me of his ability. When the Philistines was too much for God's people, God God just cleared his throat and the Philistines went to running. A few chapters earlier, the Philistines overrun the Israeli army and took the Ark of the Covenant. Yep. And they took it down there. I get them cities mixed up, but they took it down there and placed it in the temple of their God. His name was Dagon. Yep. He is half fish, half man. And they said, give me a little liberty, preacher. The Ark of the Covenant was not God. It was a visible symbol, the very presence of God. But Philistines were out of worshiping people. They thought they had stole Israel's God. For illustration's sake, give me liberty. They took God down there and set him in front of Dagon, their statue. And they went out and they came in the next morning. Anybody know what Dagon was doing? Dagon was laying flat on his face before God hadn't lifted a finger hadn't thundered from heaven hadn't been a mighty rushing wind hadn't said a word, hadn't made a move all God had done was stood down there in Dagon's temple in front of Dagon to come in Dagon was laying flat on his face and their God was worshiping our God if you got a false God tonight what you'll have to do is what they did they propped their God back up our God's all capital letter, Lord. He doesn't need anybody to prop him up. They propped Dagon up and set him uh, uh, in front of our God again, if you will. And to come in the next morning, guess what? Dagon had fallen down on his face. Except this time, his head had broke off and his hands had broke off and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Dagon back together again. And the priest said, it's too much God for us. Pick him up. Take him down there to Escalon. And they took him down there to Escalon and set him down and disease broke out. And people started dying. God hadn't done a thing. They said, take him over there where them giants are. And he picked him up and took him over there to Gath. Said, maybe them giants can handle their God. Uh, and disease broke out. And folks started dying. They said, get two milk cows. Build a cart. Get some trinket gifts. That's too much God for us. God hadn't done a thing. I come by to tell you that the God we serve is the God who can do everything uh, without him doing anything. Uh, you don't have to wait on a mighty rushing wind. You don't need an earthquake. Uh, you just need to let God step right in the middle of what your problem is he can destroy every one of your enemies deliver you out of your diseases pay off your bills and take you where he wants you to be he can do everything without even doing anything 
I see that every time I look at that stone. I remember who my God is. I see the hitherto. I see him. I give you this and I'm finished. Samuel said, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Every time I look at that stone, I see help. That help has come to me in the, uh, by the Lord's presence. Because no matter where I was, he's been right there with me. He never ran out on me. He's never left me. When I need him the most, he's right there. It almost seems, I know it's hot, but it almost seems when I need him the most, that's when he's the closest to me. It's like he almost understands. Oh, he's went as far as he can go. He ain't going to be able to handle no more. I better get up real close to him right here. He'd been many a time, hadn't been for him, his presence. I'd have waved the white flag a long time ago and said, I'll just quit right here. I'll just stop right here. But I remember looking at that stone and I was like Jeremiah. I could have quit. I could have given it up. I could have stopped. But his word was like a fire. Shut up in my bones. Just something about knowing that you have somebody that'll stand for you, that'll stay with you, that'll go all the way. His presence has helped me from way back under all all the way to this moment. Not only do I find this help in his presence, I find it in his power. I learned a long time ago that it wasn't because of my gifts and talents, not my charismatic personality. Now I'm going to confess something. When I started out preaching, we got an old church building and started the first independent fundamental King James Bible church on that side of town. Got a crowd. They got a crowd together to vote on me and name the church and incorporate and all the stuff you do when you start a church. And they did it that night and they voted. And 13 of them quit me that night. He walked by his, uh, his patriarch of his family and he said, good luck, preacher, but me and my family won't be back. And I was so young and smart, I said, well, bye. I didn't know to find out maybe we could work something out or need to or find out what to pray. I just said, well, bye. Because I didn't need him. Because Sidney Weaver was here and Sidney Weaver was full of fire and Sidney Weaver was uh, studying the word and I was young, could cut flips and holler and scream and sweat and spit. And, man, they'll just flock in here. I went three months, never had a visitor. Had 10. Five of them was me and my family. Finally got a visitor. Ten minutes into preaching, he got up and almost slung the door off the hinges getting out of there. I still don't know what I said. made him mad, but it made him mad. It took six months to finally get somebody to come and keep staying. And God kept reminding me that it's not you. And all these 30 years later, I found out I ain't got any for many friends. I own. Uh, I don't make the top list of the best preachers and I'm not the guy that many people call on and do this for. But I ain't all worried about that anymore. You know, know why? Because I knew it wasn't me. I didn't save me. I didn't call me. I didn't commission me. I didn't open any doors. I didn't do any of that. I'm not able to preach. I'm not able to draw a crowd. I'm not able to do this. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm glad that I don't have to do it in the energy of the flesh. I'm glad I don't have to work off my personality. I ain't got a good one anyway, but I ain't got to use my personality or my gifts or my talents. I just rest in the power of the Lord uh, that it's not by my power nor by my mind but it's by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts I'll just trust his power because every time I look at that stone I, I realize it was him uh, that helped me with his power all the way back yonder to this moment right here I know I saw the halos pop out on your head I know it's never happened to you but I've been there where I said I think I'll just quit right here I'll go back to driving loading trucks and I won't fool with all this. I can't make another step. And I've said, God, if you don't do something right here, I can't take another step. And it just seemed like when I couldn't take that next step, somebody come and put their, my arm up over the shoulder and they said, well, I'll just drag you till you can get your feet going again. When I was scared to step out, I knew I had to step out. I said, Lord, I just can't make that step. 
I'm glad he is there just to give me a little push. You ever notice that? I remember one time I was with a church group. We was up in the mountains, coldest water I ever been in. Of course, we was dressed proper. And my cousin had said, my cousin gets here, he'll go out on that big rock and he'll jump off in that water. I said, yeah, I ain't afraid of it. And I got up there and got the edge of it. <laughs> my cousin down there, come on, show them. I've been telling them all week. I turned around to the guy behind me. I said, uh, when, I, uh, when I ain't paying any attention, he just reached and shoved me. There ain't been many a time when God told me to do something. And I said, <laughs> I said, now, Lord, what's your... You know what I found out? When I hit that water and it didn't break my back and didn't kill me and I come up and I ain't a great swimmer and I made it over to the bank, you know what I did? I ran right back up there and got on that thing. I didn't even walk up to the edge. I just ran the next time and jumped off. And the next time God told me to do something, I didn't go, I just didn't look at it. I just started from way back here and took off running and took the plunge, praise God. I didn't do it because I'm super spiritual. I didn't do it because I mustered up the energy. I did it because it was His power that worketh in us. Now unto Him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power not that worketh in heaven not that's working on the earth but the power that worketh in us I've been helped by his presence I've been helped by his power and I've been helped by his provision well preacher I'm, I can't do that I'm living hand to mouth I've been living hand to mouth all my life from God's hand to my mouth one of the hardest things ever for me to do in life because I worked two jobs and pastored a church. And my wife can tell you, my oldest two kids grew up. Daddy was at work. Daddy was at a meeting. Or Daddy might have been fishing some. Now, I did fish too. But I was never at home. Worked like a dog. Didn't hardly have anything. Just barely, just barely get by. We always got by. Hallelujah, always got by. But my hardest thing was to let somebody just be good to you. Somebody take me out and buy a meal. I hunt a place to take them out and pay them back, you know. That always been hard for me. I was struggling with it when I went in evangelism. I said, go in evangelism, you got to let people just give you something. Lord, I've worked, made it all my life. And, uh, and the Lord finally said, you're real smart, ain't you? I've been giving it to you all their life. And he said, I gave it to them yeah. to give it to you. Said, you ought to know that. I provided it for them. Hadn't been for me, they wouldn't have had it. And they'd give it to you. And then you you know how it works. God didn't make us uh, bless, bless God didn't bless us so we'd get fat in it. God blessed us so we'd be a channel to bless someone else. His provisions, everything I have, God gave me. From my wife to my children to my granddaughter, every stitch of clothes I own, every pair of shoes, the car I drive, the house I live in, the land I live on. Praise God. I'm telling you, God has been good at providing. I'm gonna give you this right quick and I'm finished. When I went in evangelism, I just got the church running the way I wanted had the furniture nailed down had picked my family's grave plots out in the graveyard I wasn't moving I was content to stay there God woke me up at 10 minutes to 4 March the 24th and said April's your last month I went in the prayer closet mad and said God you told me to leave and I'm going to leave I paid the bill off it wasn't my bill I've got the church remodeled uh, I've got everything set up and we're really fixing to take off now you're going to make me leave I'm leaving because you told me but I ain't taking nothing with me my wife's sitting here I left the refrigerator and the stove I left the pots and the pans the towels the dishwasher uh, the dishwasher the dish rags I, I left the curtains on the shower you could have moved in right behind me all you had to bring was your clothes I took the clothes and I had meat they'd give me deer meat and I had a freezer full of meat people would give me so I took the freezer and my car had 240 something thousand miles on it I said God I'm starting with nothing and this is what I told him, prayer clause. I, I ain't saying this is the thing I should have done, but this is what I told him. I said, I'm going with nothing. Car's got 246,000, something like that, miles on it. Ain't no way I can be an evangelist. So if I make it, I'll have to give you all the glory. And if I don't make it, they'll say that Sidney Weaver worked two jobs and provided for his family. And he got old and thought, well, I'm an evangelist. And his family about starved to death. And I said, I'll take the hit, Lord. But when we stand at judgment, 
I said, I'm going to point my finger at you and say, you know, it, it was because of you. And you think God has struck me dead right there in the prayer closet. But you know what Jesus said? He said, yeah, let's do it that way and see how it works out. Just start with nothing. Four months in my date book, I didn't, want, didn't even have leading in silent prayer over the Bible school vacation, Bible school snack. I didn't have nothing four months. Walked away from church and a job with a car about to blow up. Had nothing. I said, God, I'm going to put it all on you. He said, yeah, do that and see how it works out. Well, I won't go into all the details, but let me just tell you this. I don't hardly miss preaching any week of the year. I praise God. I'm not 40 week revivals, but I hardly miss a week preaching. I've got a, a calendar filling up, driving a fairly brand new car, living in a fairly brand new house, wearing some brand new clothes. I'm not talking about any uh, uh, thing like this prosperity gospel. I'm just telling you, if you'll turn it all over to him, if you'll put it on, he said, test me and prove me and see if I won't open the windows of heaven every time I look at that stone I, I say mama I can't believe how God's done it I can't believe that person's booking me I can't believe I'm going to get to preach over there that's my hero that's this one that, I never thought I'd be here I say tonight what you ought to do is you ought to set the stone you ought to set the stone so it will remind you that hitherto that the Lord helped us Here here tonight publicly I set the stone help me mama here I raise my Ebenezer hither by thy help I've come let's bow for prayer father help us to set the stone and be reminded that hitherto hath the Lord helped us grant it to be so I pray for Jesus sake pastor if you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.